Good morning, church. The scripture reading is taken from 2 Corinthians 5, verses 14 to 21. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge, that if one died for all, then were all dead, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, Though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world, unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation now then we are ambassadors for christ as though god did beseech you by us we pray you in christ's stead be ye reconciled to god for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of god in him here in the portion of God's holy word, thanks be to God. Let us pray. Father, we want to give you thanks for this time in your presence. We thank you for who you are to us. We thank you, Lord God, that you, you bid us to come. You welcome us, Lord God, in your presence. You tell us that this is where we can find uh, grace to help in our time of need. So, Lord God, we come before you. And, and, and we pray for all those persons who are at home that they might recognize that they don't have to be in this particular building to be blessed by you, Lord God. Help them to understand that the throne of grace is wherever they are. Because wherever they are, God is. And therefore, all is well. So, Lord God, we look to you even now. We pray that you will speak to us. Bless us, Lord God, and help us to be a blessing to you. Help us to be obedient to your word that we might be edified through it and that we might glorify you through our obedience. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, I won't be long this morning. Um, as you notice, it's a short portion um, that was chosen this morning to share. And uh, the portion I know is well known to you, um, the text that was read for us uh, by Sister Jade, which talks about who we are. I think it is from this particular passage that we have this song, I'm a new creation, I'm a brand new man. All things are passed away, and I'm born again. We could have sing it, so we just start singing that song there. But we want to keep it seen here this morning. All right, so, so, so the theme this morning is, Lord, make me your instrument. Make me your instrument. If you notice a word there, one, it sounds like a prayer, don't it? It sounds like a prayer, like a request, like, a, like an appeal that we're making to the Lord, that he will make us. So it's not just a, a desire that we're expressing that, Lord, I want to be your instrument. That in itself is good. Amen? That in itself, it's good. But, but it's going beyond that. It's more than just speaking of my desire that I want to be an instrument of the Lord. What it is requested is, Lord, you make me. You get the addition? Lord, you make me because I cannot make myself. By my, myself, I will continue to trip up and to fail and to fall. But you can make me it's kind of like when jesus said to his his disciples hear how this thing work i know you want to be fishers of men but you cannot do it by yourself so here it work follow me and i will make you fishers of men i'll be talking about that the next time i come here so don't worry about it um the text here says something to us as we begin in verse 14. I'm not going to read it again. I'm just going to pick up from verse 14. I want to share three points with you and we'll pray and we'll go home and we'll eat rice and peas. How that sound? Sound good? As you see it saying, yes. <laughs> I like the cooking start already. All right. So the text says in verse 14, 
For the love of God constrain us. The love of God. You see, this Christian, this is the first thing I want to share with you. I see if, if you get this, you can go home. But don't get up and walk out though. But if you get this, you're okay for the morning. You want to hear it? Here it is. 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 The Christian walk, the Christian life is a love response. The Christian life is a love response. Okay. The Christian life is a response in love. It is a response to love. To which love? To the love of God. Hello? So the Christian life is wrapped up in this. It is me, it is you responding in love for the love that God has demonstrated towards us. Amen? It's kind of like reading Romans chapter 12 where we read after Paul spelling out from chapters 1 to 11 all that God has done for us in light of the danger and the, and the desperate situation that we found ourselves in. Eh? And he says, after spelling out everything to us, how God has blessed us, how God has preserved and protected us and provided for us. He said, therefore, I beseech you, I beg you, I implore you, in light of God's mercies, that you present your bodies. as Why we must do that? In light of. So the Christian life is a love response. It would seem to imply then that if it is that we're not living, walking right, it kind of sounds like we're not loving him back. True? If I choose, shake your head, sir. It, it, because it's a love response. Or it could mean that we're not yet appreciating the love that was demonstrating that was demonstrated towards us. Eh? Watch the text. The text says, in that Christ died for... Look at the love. So what I do, I'm doing it in light of the love that was demonstrated um, towards us. Oh, I did say I'm going to finish quick this morning. No? All right, we'll move on to the three points. Watch this. So the first point, if you're taking notes, that I want to share with you, that is in the text, is that if we're going to be instruments of God, if we're going to be his, his instrument that brings glory to him, we must first surrender to the master. So the first point is that we must surrender to the master. Watch the text. The text tells us, for the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live, listen now, that they which live should no longer or should not henceforth, the King James says, live unto themselves, but unto him who died for us. You get the picture? So, in light of the fact that Christ gave him his life for us, we should not any longer live unto ourselves for our own desires, for our own ambition, but rather to live as unto Christ. Acknowledging that we have been bought with a price. True? Therefore, we are not our own as we find in 1 Corinthians as well. Right? So the first thing is that if we are going to be made uh, a, 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 an instrument of God bringing him glory, is that we must first surrender to the master. No, let us look at the word surrender. Now, when, when we see surrender in scripture, when we talk about surrendering to God, it's not a, talking about um, becoming more committed. I know that, that one that to one come away, don't it? You see, many people, many Christians have been trying and failing in their Christian lives because they have been trying to become more committed and more dedicated. And they keep tripping up over and over and over again. And they wonder why we keep falling in the same arena. Because that is not what the word means. And if we're going to be made the instrument of God, 
it's not just becoming more dedicated or more committed. As good as that sounds, surrender means to give up. It's not trying harder. It's not about trying to do better. You, because we might mean well that we make up my mind and we say, Lord, I'm going to do better. I'm, I'm go. But I'm still trying to do. That's not surrender. Surrender is giving up. Is yielding to God for him to take control. Hmm? When you think about um, two armies fighting and, and, and one is cornered. And they're not saying, listen, I'm going to do better. No. <laughs> what surrender mean? You throw down your guns. And hands up. Right? So that is what the, 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 the Christian life is about. It is a kind of submission. It's the bowing of the will. And submitting oneself to his will. Amen? Okay, and Jesus gave us a picture of the surrender as we read in Matthew chapter 26, verse 42. You remember? Jesus feeling this pressure, this, this, this feeling of anxiety and, 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 and just, just emotional pressure while he was in the garden. You remember? And while he was under that pressure, he asked for prayer for his, 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 his disciples to join with him. And watch with him. And they fell asleep. We're not going into that now. But the text tells us that he said, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. He did this three times. So, so he gave us an, an example that if we're going to be instruments of God, we're going to have to bow our will to his will. Amen? So we must surrender to the master. The second thing we find in the text is that if we're going to allow the Lord to make us his instrument, not only do we need to surrender to the master, but we need to start the ministry. We need to start the ministry. Which ministry? Look at the text. First of all, the, 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 the scripture tells us in verse 17. Verse 17 tells us, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Eh? So, to, what is important in this walk, in this Christian walk, in this ministry, is to first acknowledge that I am not the same Garfield that I used to be. Hello? I am not the same person that I used to be. Therefore, gone are the days that I say, listen, this is what I'm going to do. And lo, I'm going to talk. I'm going to say what I want to say because I saw my tan. Lie. If you know Jesus, you're not that way anymore. Hello? I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. The old Garfield, dead and gone. The text is saying, watch this. Verse 18 says, it says, and all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and had given to us, you see what the verse said? And has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Watch this, watch this. So God has reconciled us in Christ and God has now passed on the, the baton to us for this ministry of reconciliation. As if God were actually appealing to others through us to come. So we need to start our ministry. What ministry? This ministry of reconciliation that has been passed on to us. Question then. Don't put up no hand you know. Have you started that ministry as yet? I know you might be involved in ministry in church. But have you started that ministry as yet? Because this ministry is not given to church people. This ministry is given to Christians. Jesus, well, help me not to pass this one. Listen, this, I'm going past it because we have a little bit of time. The, 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 the text says, who was this ministry given to? 
Those who have been born again. Those who are new creation in Christ. So this is not what we do just in church. This is who we are because we are in Christ. And those who are in Christ have been given this ministry of reconciliation. So if it is that we're not doing it, we need to go back to the first one that says we need to surrender to the master. Because if we don't surrender to the master, we're not going to start the ministry. Are you with me? Watch this. So what does it entail? The text says, the text says, uh, it, it, it is telling us not only that we are a new creation. Look at verse 20. Verse 20 tells us, Know then we are ambassadors of Christ. Now you know who an ambassador is. An ambassador is sent by a, 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 a government or a, a, an institution or if it's a kingdom, a kingdom sent by a king, right? No, watch this. The ambassador cannot just do or must not just do what he feels like doing. True? Because if I am, if I am sent by um, Phil as the king for this kingdom, and I am sent to Cuba to represent him. No, I can go over Cuba and, and see some people and see something. I say, well, I don't really think I'm supposed to give them this thing, you know, because I don't really like how them. That's not my business because I'm not representing myself. Are you with me? I am representing him who sent me. And for me to be a good ambassador, then I first need to, watch this, I need to, I need to listen to the master. Hello? I need to learn what the ministry is. And I need to do just that. Amen? So what's the text? So the text says we are ambassadors of who? Of Christ. So we need to be representing him, watch this, in this ministry. i tell you something about this ministry. It doesn't start at 8 o'clock in the morning time, Sunday. Hello? <laughs> Why, I wish this was a Bible study. You see, man. Look at that, boy, that's something. Yeah. Watch this. this. This particular ministry doesn't begin at, on Sundays at, at 8 o'clock. This particular ministry that we have been given, it, it, it actually goes to work with us. <laughs> because we go to work. So whether we are in the gully, whether we are in the plantation, or in the palace, it doesn't matter. Wherever we are, this ministry, it goes with us because of who we are, because of who we represent. It's just like the three Hebrew boys who went down to Babylon. But them that live like Babylonian. I'm not helping anybody here, sir, man. Listen, because where we are doesn't determine how we live. Where we are doesn't determine who we are. Who we are and whose we are should determine how we live, wherever we are. Amen? So what's the text? The text says, the text says that we are ambassadors for Christ. So if that is so then, what's the, what's the priority? Watch this. What's the priority in this ministry? The priority in this ministry is, not, watch this. The priority in this ministry is not just, is not just to win souls, you know. <laughs> Winning souls, very important. Hello? But the priority in this ministry is that we represent Christ. Mm -mm. The, the priority in this ministry is not just telling people about God. The priority in this ministry, according to this, is being an ambassador for God, therefore representing the God we are talking about. And by that, people being drawn to him. 
Matthew 5, 16 says, Let your light so shine. I'm glad you know Bible people, you know. So that people will see your good works and come and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us rush past that. So we see the priority of the ministry because the purpose of the ministry is really to win the loss at all costs. Hello? But, but if we're going to... I, I give you... I give you, you want some brata? I give you a little brata. Because we're not good people. I've known a long time. Watch this. If we're going to be used in a significant way as his, his instrument. The first thing, put this on the sticky side of your mind, even if you don't write it down on paper. The first thing is that we need to make sure that we are real. Tell somebody beside you, say, you have to be real. Them no one here. Tell some, tell him again. Me too, you have to tell him. You have to be real. Because you are, people don't like people when they're real. Are you hearing me? And if it is that we are, we are, and by real, you know what I mean, genuine, I mean sincere. It means that if we are around people and if we walk among them and we talk the talk, but we don't walk the walk, them know saying, I hypocrite them. Are you with me? I don't I look like I don't know what I'm talking about. Watch this, watch this. There's a situation, I'll give you this quickly. There's a situation in Acts. Acts chapter, it started from chapter 3 and it goes into chapter 4. Now, Bible people, so no matter about what is. John and Peter, you remember the man that they, eat, they, they heal at Gate Beautiful? The people that beat the man, um, beat them and say, Yo, yeah, yeah, me. We're not supposed to do this. Done. This name bo talking about Jesus. We don't want you to do anything more than this name Jesus. You remember? The, 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 the group of leaders they met, them send the disciples outside of the room. They met and they were having their discussion and them said, Jesus, you know, say them man, yeah, them man, yeah, really, look, check it, Acts 4 and 13, them say, you know, say them man, yeah, really know Jesus, it's true. <laughs> no, we not like them, you know. We not in them, you know. But them really know Jesus. Jesus, I want to care somebody right with me, they know. Watch this, watch this. If it is that we are sincere and we walk out our talk, even when they don't like us, they will respect us because them say, boy, I really know Jesus for true. So even if them go on bad and them beat me in front of them, because remember, them just beat them. But as we just don't beat them and send them out of the room as them gone, them say, hey, but she really, she a really Christian for true, you know. Because we, we don't in a hurry, you know. Because she, can't, she make, we can't make no money. Because we used to make money until she come in at the office because now she are in... So like you know her. All right, let us move on. So the first thing is that we need to be real. But not only that, in this ministry, we need to be ready. We need to be prepared and available. You notice, we never say prepared or available. Because you have some people who are prepared, but not available. You can't. Oh, we may I get myself in and do a Yes, so we need to be prepared. We need to be ready. Because if you're prepared, if you know things but not available, and you, you, you're, you're not allowing yourself to be used by God, you're not ready. Mm -mm. All right, we'll move to the next one. So, so we need to be real. We need to be ready. We need to be resolute. We need to be res resolute. By that I mean we need to be determined. We need to be steadfast that come hell or high water, me I go do what God want me to do because what? I'm not representing myself. So in spite of what they are saying or what is happening or the context that I'm in, I need to be resolute. I share one last point with you. <clears throat> so one, we need, to, we need to surrender to the master. Two, two we need to start the ministry. And the last one I want to share with you. Three, we need to share the message. We need to share the message. We need to share the gospel message for this mess age that we are living in. This mess age that we are living in, that calls wrong, right? <laughs> right, wrong, 
that cause good bad and bad good. Something wrong with it. True? We need to share the gospel. We need to go because we are ambassadors for Christ. So what must we tell them? What must we tell them in our circles, in our school, in our uh, surroundings, in, in our commute, wherever? What must we tell them? First thing we need to tell them about the plight that they are in. What must we tell them? Tell them about the plight that they are in. The plight or the problem that they are in. What problem are they in? The scripture tells us in Romans 3 and 23 that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. What problem are they in? The scripture tells us that the wages of sin is death. What problem are they in? The, the scripture tells us in Hebrews chapter 9 and 27 that it is appointed unto once to die. And after that is judgment. So when they're dead, you know, just dead and gone. We will give an account. Tell them about the plight that they are in. Secondly, we need to tell them about the provision that God has made. So tell them about the plight or the problem that they are in. But also tell them about the provision that God has made. Look at the text. The text tells us in verse 21. For he, talking about the Father, has made him who knew no sin to become sin. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. We find in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 6 where it tells us that all we have gone astray, every one of us to our own way, but the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. The provision that God has made, we find it in the text. The reconciliation, not imputing unto them again their sins. But not only should we tell them about the plight that they are in or the problem that they have, not only should we tell them about the provision that God has made, lastly, we need to tell them about the only person, the only person who can save. Eh? You notice I say, the only person who can save. Not the only thing that saves. The only person who can save. We need to present the true gospel of salvation. Too many preachers preaching and telling people, you're having a tough time, you're having it hard in your life, then come to Jesus as if the call to salvation is for fixed problems. Only help me with this one. If there's one, we may have to take a look at time, but it's this one. Because there's a false gospel that is being preached today that is telling people, say, you're having a problem with your husband, then come. You're having a problem with your, then come. As if, as if the call of God is to fix problems in life. When we get that is brought up, now, some people are uncomfortable with this now, but I'm going to share the word of God with you. Listen to this. Listen to this. When you see salvation in scripture, there are many senses in which salvation is used. The word can, can be talking about being, because the word actually means to be delivered, right? So it can be talking about being delivered from um, problem. It can talk, it up, can, can talk about being delivered from persecution, being delivered from the enemy as God Gave, brought salvation to David when it was not talking about his soul he's talking about from the persecution of Saul so, so we need to understand the context of which salvation is being used then right but when we're talking about calling people to salvation meaning the saving of the soul we need to stop promising them something that God is not promising them Amen. Jesus peace Lord help me with this watch this there was a man who was on a cross at the right of Jesus and he cried out to Jesus and his soul was saved. But he died on the cross. Lord help me with this. Watch this. There was another man on him left. Who was crying out to be saved. But he also died on his cross. The issue that was happening there at the cross is this. One was crying to be delivered from his situation and the other was crying to be delivered from his sin. One was crying for salvation of the soul and one was crying for salvation from his situation. 
We need to be careful what we're promising people. Because you see, when we promise them, them something there, and them come and still a face all hell and high water, them give up. Them give up because what they came for is not what they're getting. Tell them the gospel. Tell them the only person who can truly see him. Tell them that church don't fix it. It don't cure the people them nice. Tell The scripture tells us, Jesus speaking in John chapter 14. When I lock my Bible, make your system a done. The, the, listen, the scripture tells us in John chapter 14 and verse 6, Jesus speaking. And he says to them, listen, I am. He says that I am the way. I am not one of the, the path that you may come. I am the only way. I'm a matter of fact. Acts tells us in, in chapter 4 and verse 12 where the apostle speaking and he says neither is there salvation in any other for there is no other name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. <laughs> Tell them the truth. It don't make any sense. We're full up with church and heaven still empty. Oh my God. Watch this. We are called as ambassadors and we ought to represent him. So our prayer this morning is that we are saying, Lord, make me your instrument. It will only happen when we surrender, when we give up to the master. It will only happen when we start the ministry. That which he has passed down to us, the ministry of reconciliation, it will only happen when we share the message. For those persons who are online, who you might not know this Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I present this Jesus to you, the only one who can deliver you from the penalty of sin from the punishment of sin, who will guide you through this problem and struggle with the power of sin, and one day will ultimately deliver you from the very presence of sin. If you want this Jesus, you can pray with me. There's no magic in the prayer. There's no, there's no magic in the prayer, but if you mean it, the Lord tells us that if you mean it and you say these words and believe it in your heart, you will be saved. So pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you a sinner. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I accept you, Lord, as my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you for dying for me and for paying the price for my sins. Make me your child. No. I surrender to you in Jesus' name. Amen. For all the believers who are listening, we are called to call others because God wants to use his free people to free people. The Lord bless you. Hallelujah. The Lord has spoken by his manservant. Make us instruments. Lord, make me your instrument. And so, as the word has gone forth, the Lord has spoken, we need to surrender to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, Lord, today, the beginning of the journey is our surrender to you. And so, Lord, we bow this day and we open our lives and we yield to you. And we ask, Holy God, that as your people, that we'd be willing to give up our own will, that thy will be done. 
and in so doing that Lord indeed we would be ambassadors for Christ so Lord we thank you for this word that you have spoken into our spirits we pray O oh God that it would find good soil in our hearts that Lord you would water it and that it would grow and that Lord it would bring about great increase and we pray God that even as you continue to use Garfield and his family in the ministry that you continue to strengthen them to be like flint to speak the word of God tearing down the lies of the enemy ripping out the things that are not of you O oh God so that Lord you would raise up a people who are walking in purity walking in righteousness and walking to glorify you so we thank you for the word today and we thank you for this time in your presence as we give you glory, as we give you praise, in Jesus' name. And as we stand, Lord, we will just offer this word in the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all Heavenly home. 